When people make the switch to GNU Linux, it doesn't take long for them to get comfortable, but nothing upsets that comfort faster than booting up to a kernel panic. Now, when someone first experiences this, they'll usually do the same thing that the kernel did. They'll panic, maybe even curse a little bit, and wonder why they left Windows or Mac OS for Linux in the first place. And they might even switch back to those OSs. Now, for the people who are willing to fix this, I've often seen people go about it in a kind of ham-fisted way by just reinstalling the entire OS. And this is understandable. If you're used to working with Windows or Macs, this is often the way that you would fix them. But the problem here is that you're going to, of course, lose all your data. Now maybe you're thinking, I've got backups, I've got snapshots of the system, not worried about losing my data. Fair enough. But take a closer look at this particular kernel panic that you're looking at right now. It occurred on a Gen 2 system. One does not simply reinstall Gen 2 without spending a few hours compiling it, even on a multi-threaded system. So what do we do here? Well, first, we don't panic. Just read the error message. It's a kernel panic, not syncing, unable to mount root file system on unknown block. So the kernel can't mount the root file system for some reason. Something has happened to it. So you should either go back in your own memory or ask your client, if you are fixing this for someone else, what has happened to the system recently? What changes have occurred before this issue happened? Since Gentoo users often tinker with their kernel producing a custom one of their own, there is a high possibility that this kernel panic could have occurred due to not including the proper support for your file system into your kernel. So the way that you would fix this is to boot from either a recovery USB, uh, you could use the same one that you install Gentoo from or any other live Linux OS would suffice. You could use one that's got a whole GUI with a web browser installed on it to get support on the internet for your particular issue. Or you could just boot from another Linux partition if you have multiple drives or multiple partitions in your system. And the next thing that you want to do is mount your root file system to somewhere in your MNT directory. Now, of course, if you have multiple drives, you might want to do an fdisk hyphen L to figure out which drive is which. So I know that my Gen 2 system is installed on my Samsung 860, and I know that my root file system is this one here, the dev stb4. And you should also run an lsblk f so that you can see the file system types that are in use uh, on this drive. So take note of this, especially if you used a more exotic file system type, since like I said, you're probably experiencing this issue because support for it probably wasn't built into your kernel. Um, now this, isn't my particular issue. I just have ext4. Um, it is still possible with ext4 if I didn't build this into my kernel, but I know that I did. I'll still show you how to fix that particular issue anyway. So next I'm going to mount dev stb4 to mount gentoo. And then I'm going to chur root into mount gentoo. And so now from this point on, uh, we have all of the same commands available to us that we would have in Gentoo. If I do a NeoFetch, you can see that obviously within this terminal, it thinks that it's in Gentoo. But if I pop another terminal, you can see that really I'm booted into Linux Mint. Uh, so yeah, that's how Chirrut works. Um, anyway, we're going to CD into user src linux and now we're going to enter the menu config of the kernel and then you want to go into your file system types and check through these options to make sure that you have support for the file system that you're using now 
like I said a little earlier, in my particular case, this isn't the issue. You can see that I have ext4 uh, built into my kernel. Uh, if I was using you know, something else, like one of these file system types, then if it wasn't checked, I would just have to check it, build it, uh, rebuild my kernel, reboot, and then everything should work fine. Uh, but in my particular case, uh, the reason that this issue happened is because number one, I built my Gen2 system without an init RAM FS. So most Linux distros, especially the ones that just work, uh, they'll be built with this automatically because it's typically used to do certain things like decrypt your root partition if you end up picking that option to you know, encrypt your root partition or your home folder or anything like that. Uh, it's also used to identify your file system using the UUID, which is really what caused my problem. So I recently added a new drive to my system, which is what caused my Gen2 drive's device identifier to change. With UUID, of course, uh, that never changes, but um, when you have uh, these SDB, SDA, these type of drive numbers and letters, they can get bumped up if you all of a sudden add a new drive to your system. And this is actually even easier to fix. You don't have to deal with the kernel to resolve this. Uh, you simply have to update your grub.cfg to point grub to the correct drive identifier so that it can actually boot your root file system. So to fix this, you want to mount your EFI system. Uh, so again, if you're not sure what which one that is, you can just do an F disk L, and then we can see that in my case, the EFI is dev sdb2. So I'm going to mount dev sdb2 to mount gen2 boot. And then we can CD into that. All right, so now we want to go into this grub folder. And we see that this is the file we need to edit right here, grub.cfg. So just go ahead and open that in any old text editor. And we can take a look to see uh, what happened. So it's trying to boot Gen2 from, uh, it's thinking that the root file system is on dev std4, but as you saw, it's not dev std4 anymore, it's dev stb4. So we can just fix this pretty easily. We just wanna find dev std and then replace that with dev sdb. Replace all. And there we go. So now everything is in the proper place that it needs to be. So we'll go ahead and save this, close out of it. And so now when it tries to boot into Gentoo, it should be able to properly mount the root file system. Let's see if it does. And there we go, a working Gentoo system all data intact, no reinstallation necessary, no countless hours wasted by recompiling the entire thing.